like, share, subscribe. Hey y'all, welcome back. Number 34 is one of these, it's like a multiple, multiple choice problem. It says, which of the following define y as a function of x? And they give you three choices. And so, um, unfortunately, you can't just pick the right one. Here, there's a possibility that we have multiple correct answers. And so your multiple choice items here are going to say, you know, either none of them are functions, one and two, one and three, two and three. At the end of the day, we pretty much just have to check them all, okay? So y as a function of x. This is really just a definition. If you understand the definition, this should be a pretty simple problem here, okay? If y is a function of x, then what's true about it? Okay, what does it mean to be a function of x? What it means is that each input um, only has one output. Okay, so in other words, for each value of x, you are only going to have one value of y that um, corresponds to it. So if y is a function of x, I would say then each value of x corresponds to exactly one value uh, for y. Now, visually, we can test for this using something called the vertical line test, okay? And, you know, the graphs are going to be the easy, basically the easiest one to, to, to test for this uh, to see if y is a function of x. The vertical line test says that for each x value, you know, you're, you're testing to see is there only one y value that corresponds to that. So the idea is, you know, these vertical lines that you could draw on the graph. If you cross the graph more than once, then it's not a function. But if at any point you can only cross the graph once, then it is going to be a function because that means that that particular x value that you're drawing the vertical line to only has one y value associated with it. So like, you know, this one would probably be a little further down. This second vertical line I drew would only cross once. This one only crosses the graph once. The only real questionable um, piece to this graph, this piecewise graph, is like, well, what if I draw a vertical line right here? What does that mean? Does that have two outputs or just one? Well, this closed dot versus the open dot, the black dot versus the white dot, um, actually means something different, right? So if it's closed, that means the value of the function is going to be determined by that point. If it's open, that means the value of the function is, is not defined there. And usually you use that if you've got a situation where, like, let's say we've got a function that's defined for values where x is less than 1, for instance, meaning, like, we'll have values for the function for every, va for every real number up until 1. Um, since you can't really have, like, a stopping point there, there's no biggest number smaller than 1, um, you have to, uh, it's really the best way to display that. So... Uh, the bottom line here is when you have a, a vertical line here I want to draw through here, if it passes through only one closed dot, then you're safe, even if you've got some open dots that it seems to pass through as well because the function is not actually defined there. So it's kind of a roundabout way of basically getting to the point where, uh, you know, I'm going to say number three, that is y is a function of x for number three. So this one checks out, okay? So I can go through my answer choices now and at least narrow it down a little bit. Um, I know the answer's not going to be none because I found one that works. Uh, I know three is one, so I can, I can cross out these. So now I'm, I, I'm not really narrowing it down that much, but at least now I know it's going to be C, D, or E. So the vertical line test can be a test for a graph to tell whether or not it's a function. If you have a table... It's actually pretty easy on the table, too, because you're really just going back to the definition. Does each value of x only correspond with one y? And uh, if we look at this table, each value of x is only represented once. So this would not be a function. Let's say we had some extra entry here that was like 1, you know, comma 3 or something like that. Um, that is the ugliest one I've ever seen, but <laughs> okay. Let's just say there was an extra entry here that was 1, 3. That would no longer be a function then because we, then we'd have this x value 1 that'd be corresponding to two different y values, 2 and 3, right? So that would prevent it from being um, labeled as a function. But since we do not have that, each x value is only represented once, there's no repeating x values up here, 
with different y values, then we can go ahead and say, yep, 2, that is a function as well. Okay, so the one without 2 is no good. We can cross that out. So now we know it's either going to be D or E. And it all depends on whether or not one is a function. So, you know, narrowing it down doesn't really help that much. You know, I guess now we got it down to a coin flip if you're not really sure. Um, but at the end of the day, you've got to really know, you know, which one of these are functions and which one aren't. So the last one is this equation. And we can rewrite this as y equals 7 minus 2x squared, which is a quadratic uh, equation. Um, if you were to look at the graph, this is going to be super rough sketch, but um, it would look something like this, basically. Um, and uh, it, it does form a parabola, and it's quadratic, and uh, there are no x values that have multiple y values that are associated with it. In other words, at, no matter what number you plug in for x, um, you're only going to get a single y value. Okay, like if I plug in 0, I'm just going to evaluate this, and I get one single number for y. I plug in negative 2. Again, I just plug that in. We get one single number for y. So this definitely would be a function. What you want to look out for as far as like, you know, a similar example where the equation would not be a function is, um, you know, if the square was on the y and we would end up having an equation like this, like x equals, um, or let's say it was like 2x plus y squared equals 7, um, or even to make it simpler, let's just say it equals 0, or, or 1, okay? Um, is that going to, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking of this on the spot here. Let, let's make it 6. So, um, yeah, I think I'm making this more complicated than it needs to be. But basically, if you have this y squared, it's not going to be a function because you could have um, uh, values for x that correspond to two potential values for y because of the square. Uh, so, like, I'm trying to think of, let me, let me think, give you a, a, an even simpler example here. Let's just say we had x equals y squared. In other words, that y squared, if you see the square on the y, it's not going to be a function, is really what I'm trying to get at. But, like, for instance, like, here, um, you know, if x was 25, for instance, let's say x was 25, then we would have two values for y for that one x value, like 5 squared is 25, but negative 5 squared is also 25. So this would have two y values for one x value. This would not be a function. Um, and so really what's going to happen is if you ever get a y squared on this, it's that one's not, y is not going to be a function of x. So uh, bottom line here is that our answer for number 34 is going to be e. All three of these end up being functions, which are very nice. But uh, yeah, it doesn't mean you have to check all three of these. I don't really know of a shortcut for this one. You just really have to know what a function means and, uh, and how to check equations, tables, and graphs um, to, to, to test to see whether or not you have a function or not. Uh, well, that's it for number 34. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.